Hey guys, you are watching Hype TV Australia, and we've got a very special guest today. Uh, we've got Jim Robertson from the producer of Moon Rock for Monday. So, how are you going today, Jim? I'm really well. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me on Hype TV. Yeah, thank you. I have a virus. What kind? It attacks my immunity. How are the new pills? Better. I never lived to be older than 16. The moon rock. Do you know you can see it from space? If you go there, it can heal your sickness. You know, we've been through this Monday. It's too far, it's too expensive, and where would we find the time? Monday! I'm Tyler. I'm Monday. What's his name? Rabbit 2. Yeah, that's the worst name I've ever heard. I could come with you. Why do you want to go to this Moonrock so bad? Um, so I've yet to see Moonrock for Monday, so could you tell us a bit about the movie? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's it's a road trip film um, about a little girl whose name is Monday, and she's terminally ill, and she's about 10 years old, and she is um, she believes that if she can just get to... The Moon Rock, which she's a, a, a kind of phrase she's coined for Uluru, um, that will we'll heal her. And it's set in 1999. And by a twist of fate, she gets um, caught up with a fugitive teenage boy. Um, and they together road trip to the Northern Territory, heading you know to in search of this of this Moon Rock that she believes would heal him. And he and and the boy's obviously running from the police because he's done some kind of he's done something quite quite oh, quite yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's it's a quintessential um, Aussie road trip film. It's Last Cap to the Darwin meets Little Miss Sunshine. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, I love Little Miss Sunshine. Great movie. That that was awesome. Sweet. So really um, good. yeah. So what drove you to work on this movie? Like, was there a passion that you drove you to like work in this particular film? Um. Well, I my my dad took me to see Star Wars when I was five years old, and I think it ruined me. Um, <laughs> I fell in love with with um. I just wanted to know everything about how how films were made and how yep. you know it, it just seemed so real and so lifelike. Even though it was a very dated film now, yeah. I, I, I was incredible. And so you know, I I watched the behind the scenes, the making of, and um. So I was very interested from a very early age um about all all things filmmaking um and you know um I was very curious. One of the very first visual, visual effects companies or special effects companies was Industrial Light and Magic, and um, which is part of the George Lucas offshoot. And and I, I was just so curious. And and um, you know then I got into acting and and to drama and pursued all those things at school. And then I, I kind of gave up when I hit my mid teens. Um, yeah. You know I, I think back in the nineties it was you know you, men could get bullied for. Uh, um, you know, pursuing the arts or pursuing mm. that wasn't more than as cool as football or, you know, yeah, yeah. skateboarding or surfing. So it was, um, it was something I kind of just like ended up just falling away from. Um, also, there's the whole stigma about you can't make money through the arts, which is, um, yeah, it's, it's difficult, but it's not exactly true. Um, and yeah, so I, 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 and then when I was in my 30s, I, well, when I turned 30, actually, I, I decided to push back into the arts and, at first, it was acting, and then it it, it, it eventually do, it evolved into into producing. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. No, that's amazing. Yeah. Like it's just having a creative passion itself is just something really amazing. But like, yeah, I know what you mean. Back at school, like you know, kids like going, oh well, you got to be a football player and all that. But you know, having a creative passion is actually good for the soul as well. So yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So this movie itself, like, the, the cast is amazing. Like, it's got, you know, Karina Banner, it's got Nicholas Hope, it's got, like, David Field. I mean, like, what was it like working with such, like, a stellar cast? I mean, it was just an amazing cast. Yeah, well, I mean, being a producer, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working with them in the, in the fact that I'm helping my director cast them. Um, you know, we, we, it start, all starts with the script. It's the foundation to any good film. Um, like, the, I guess the, you know, the cement is a found, is the foundation to a building, and all the other things come into play, like your makeup, yeah. your camera, your electrical, and your actor, your cast, your ensemble. Yeah, yeah. Karina, Nicholas, David Field, Alan Jukes, Aaron Jeffries—they're all Aussie veterans. Um, you know, they they played 
um, the support roles. Um, it, it was amazing. Um, I, I'd worked with Nicola Pope in the past um, I, on another movie I produced called The School, which, which yeah. was another low-budget indie. Um, but, yeah, the rest were all um, I hadn't worked with before. And, you know, Karina's over in the in the U.S. shooting V.C. Andrews and Ruby and um, doing a big American H, um, no, sorry, not HBO, but one of the major network shows over there. But, but I, I, for me, it was actually the discovery of two actors who I hadn't come across before that was probably the highlight. Yeah. And that would yeah. namely be um, George Puller, who is, um, who, who I honestly believe um, is, is the next Heath Ledger of oh. Australia, yeah. which is a big call, I know. Um, yeah. But um, he is, if he continues the way he's going, uh, he will be. Um, he's over, mm. he just finished a show with Emmy Award winning so Golden Globe Award winning Michael Chiklis called Coyote, which was released on Sony and Paramount, which he plays a major role. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he's already done another two films. He's over in Perth shooting a film right now. He's done another. He, he's doing voiceover work for another Aussie animation film called called, called Combat Wombat. Um, he he won Casting Guild um, Rising Star. He won uh, Best Actor for Moonrock for Monday at Australian Security uh, sorry, Australian Screen Industry Network Awards. And he won um, the Actor Award for Best New Emerging Talent for I think I think it was a place wow. a place to go home. So he, yeah. he's honestly one of those ones to watch, and he's only I think he's only twenty four or so. so she's he's so young, yeah. He's so young, and he's got such a bright future. And then Ashlyn again, even younger. She's when we saw her audition tape, we saw about four hundred girls for the title role of Monday to play the little girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, she's playing she's playing a terminal role. It's a very heavy role. It's a very emotionally draining role. Yeah, and you need that emotional intelligence, and so. When we saw her tape, she was 10. When we cast her, she was 11. And when we shot the film, she was 11. Um, yeah. She turned 12 through the pandemic and in post-production. And she's now 13 when the film's been released. So, oh, wow. <laughs> um, but, you know, we saw 400, uh, you know, we saw about 400 girls tape. We did our own search through, you know, casting networks and Star Now and various others. But yeah. then in the, end, we, in the end, we couldn't find out on Monday. We had, to, we had to turn to a phenomenal casting director called Marianne Jade. He mm. cast a lot of the big Australian network TV shows and yeah. films. And once, as soon as we saw Ashlyn's tape, it got down to like two girls. But we, we, we just, there was something, there was an, I don't know if you've seen the film, but it was just, there was something special about it. Listen, she needs medication or she could die. So where is she? Where is she? How do you know if you can trust a hunt? Oh, you can't. Well, I trust you. I I feel like I've been looking out the back window my whole life. Dad doesn't believe in heaven. Well, it's still there. Will you get to go? Uh, probably not. Why? Because there's some rules to life, and I broke them. He's <laughs> <laughs> got it. He's got it. Go Yeah, I really want to see the movie because, like, I mean, the last type of movie we've heard about similar to this is, like, maybe, like, Opal Dream, but it's kind of, like, also maybe Baby Teeth as well, which is kind of similar as well, like a girl who's got, like, a terminal illness. So I am yeah. really looking forward to seeing this movie. It looks really good, and hopefully soon I'll be able to watch it, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you, where are you based, Josh? Me? I'm based out in uh, Blacktown area, Doonside. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, Western we'll, Suburbs, we'll, so Western Suburbs boy. So yeah, but I've always looked out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, but, I'm, I'm an ex Sydney boy as well, but I, like we, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange for you to get a screener somehow. Oh, like, for sure, I so want to see it. That comes up to my next question as well about stream services. So with stream yeah. services like Netflix and Stan, how do you feel about the Australian film industry at this point in time? Do you feel like it's um, the industry is improving for like these type of streaming services? And you know how is it? Do you feel like it's improving at all? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be truthful and say I, I don't feel it's improving. I love the Australian industry, and I want to preface it with that. I love Australian films. Um, mm. We have such incredible wealth of talent, writers, directors, producers, from mm. you know George Miller, Mad Max, yep. um, you know Heath Ledger and Russell Crowe, and all the all the all the names that you would know from that have gone on to do amazing things on on the world stage. Yeah. And we have the most amazing, you know, we've got amazing female writer, director, producers um, um, emerging, and that's so important. And and so, but I, I do feel that um, the streaming services, you know, the, the Morrison government recently, um, there, there was a thing with the quotas with having having to have a certain amount of content, like yeah, yeah, C, C and SBS have to have. 
Mm. But I, I feel like we could do more. I feel like yep. really honestly, um, we could, we could, we could encourage the streamers to um, pick up more Australian, Australian content. Um, yep. work. You know, yeah. we, we're 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 not even a low budget film, Moon Rock for Monday. We're a micro budget film. Yep. When you look at a film that's sub a million dollar budget versus a two hundred million dollar Mortal Kombat film, you just, mm. I mean, you can't compete. Com- and sub- yeah. subconsciously, when a, when a customer goes to the movie cinema. They might see a poster for Moon Rock Monday and go, well, that, I'm curious. That's interesting. But I'll see a poster for Mortal Kombat. If there's a brand, they know they're going to get subconsciously $200 million worth of value, whether it's a Marvel film or a Star Wars film. Mm. And so with their $20, you know, Diana to discover the yeah, outro or $20, you know, yeah. uh, 20 bucks, they're going to go, well, that's a safe bet. Yeah. Um, and, I might, and, you know, if they're going to see Australian cinema, Australian films, that they're probably more likely to, to wait till it comes to a streaming service and mm. not go and see it at the cinema. That being said, we had a really record month with The Dry and um, Penguin Bloom and High High Our Ground um, in, 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 I think it was February. Yep. So that gave me hope. Um, but but I think we can always do, be doing more. And I think the recent announcement that they were going to reduce the um, you know, incentives and tax rebates, especially after a pandemic, is, is a little bit of a slap in the face. I, thought, I really think the government needs to put more into the arts, encourage yep. the arts, encourage, encourage us, because it, it's... It's bloody bloody hard yakker out there when you've yep. got no gov- government support or studio finance to and, and so independent filmmaking is very challenging and I, I do think we we could do more to encourage filmmakers and help young emerging filmmakers to um, get films out there for for the, for the audience to see. Yeah, I agree. Like you know, it's so important for movies like this to be able to you know be able to be shown. Like you said, like with Mortal Kombat being a massive production. I mean, it's just like it's hard to compete against that. But then again, you know, the storyline could be very small, but to compared to this one, which has more of an interesting storyline and you just want to get it pushed out to an audience and it's just so difficult. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's just hard. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it is hard. I mean, it's not, it's not impossible. I mean, like films like recent films, like baby teeth and, mm. and it's been, and you know, I mean, the dry was, I mean, that was a much larger budget than what we had, but you know, it's, it's still, it was still really, really lovely to see a film like The Dry do 20 million at the box office. I mean, that, I think that blew everyone's, or 20 yeah. plus million at the box office. I, I haven't kept tabs now, yeah. now, but once it broke the 20 mark, it was like, okay, you know, mm. bravo, that's amazing. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I look, I, I, I hold hope for Australian cinema, mm. but I really do think we could be, be doing more in of every course. way supporting it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are you a real life astronaut? How do you know? We're going to the moon rock. Now I can do you one better. I can take you to the moon. I agree, hundred percent. So with this movie as well, were there any like challenges in making this movie from a producer side of things? And like, just yeah. <laughs> were there any challenges that you can talk about? Well, oh yeah, um, a lot. <laughs> from, from script to screen, it was. Um, I mean, first of all, the foot, you know that. But the first stage was development, which is before you even open up an office and start casting, and just get, just getting the money is the first challenge. We've already talked about that. Then when you've got the money, it's okay. Well, we you, you usually don't have enough. You're usually kind of having to make concessions, you know, where you can't afford that location or that actor or whatever. Um, so you might have to go back and do another pass on the script. But um, this this was particularly hard film because it's a road trip movie and it has a young actor who's you know 10 or 11 and it was her first film so she had no set experience we're limited call times so you have to give her um strict breaks with the to comply with the office of children's guardian to comply by law we're trying to shoot the film in you know four or five weeks across three states um that's back and forth that's over ten thousand kilometers right to the center of australia we had hail in sydney and the extreme rain we had 50 degree plus days in Cuba Pee. Yeah. We were trying to shoot a film, a, a period film in the 90s, um, which someone should have like seriously told us, slapped us in Nazi, but we were, we, we, that was our vision. Um, and, and then we, we had animals, planes, trains, automobiles, everything they say yeah. you don't, you, you shouldn't do to, to make a first film. We, we were like, ah, oh, we're suckers for punishment. Let's do that. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, there were lots of challenges. We had cars breaking down. We had um, you know, trucks that had, had um, is a, you know, a lot of kangaroos tried to cross roads out in the middle of Australia, and uh, yeah. unfortunately, sometimes they don't make it, which is sad. But I mean, we had mm. we had we had cars breaking down. We had flights missed. We had 
Um, oh gosh. <laughs> we, 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 everything that possibly could go wrong yeah. would, would go wrong on a, on a weekly, daily basis. But producing is about putting out fires and it's about keeping a cool head and just going, okay, well, how do we fix this? Mm. What, what is the, what is the, what, what's today's problem? Mm. And so between myself and the director, we'd have a little chat in the morning and we'd go, we'd literally, you know, really just, we have these, this is everything that's happening, happening. These are like three or four problems. And we'll go, okay, what's, what's the problem that's going to, is the most urgent right now today? And then mm. literally forget about the other problem. Let's, let's just, let's just focus on that problem. Find another, another way, whether it's shoot a different angle, um, have another standing double because the actor's not ready or whatever it is. It's like, it's, it's really just about um, problem solving, which is what I love mm. about being on set. I, just, I, I love being a producer who is actually actively on set. But yeah, I mean, and also the other thing is we had like over 50 locations in the film. So, wow. um, yeah. yeah, and, and yeah, so it's, it was a very, very challenging film. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's a fun part of filmmaking. It's always going to be a challenge in it, you know? I mean, there's yeah. no point doing a film. There's no, you know, challenges. It'd be too easy, you know? That's the whole yeah. good about Australian yeah. filmmaking, you know? Like, there's going to be challenges in Australian filmmaking. <laughs> yeah. So, although, although yeah. saying that, the, the, the director's next film, it's a, it's a three-hand kidnap film um, in, <laughs> re- relatively set in one location. So I can't, oh, that, I, can't, I can't wait to shoot that Oh, one. it's like so much easier. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, be seeing, I'll be sitting there with my coffee going, this is great. This is just as great. This is great. Well, you hope, you hope. It looks uh, like a yeah, blackout or something. <laughs> yeah, look, every film has its challenges. Of I, course. I, 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 but I do feel that we, we picked an extraordinarily hard film to, to yeah. shoot for our, our company. And my director's debut, uh, feature film, which is he's he's also my my business partner, Kurt Martin, and he's phenomenal. But yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm proud of what we've accomplished with the with the movie. Yeah, well, I'm cannot wait to see this movie, so I'm so looking forward to it. So let's ask the next question: Like, um, do you have any projects in the pipeline? Like anything for the future that you could possibly talk about to us? You know, maybe something that's not secret. Like, you know, something that's you know. Yeah, people... sure. Yep. Um. Okay. So we've um, like I'm I'm I I was in the military after. In my brief interlude between my teen years and my and and you know entering into the uh, into the showbiz world at, at age thirty, um, I, and so I've got two war films. One is about the life of Sir General John Monash, yep, um, who is probably the most, um, uh, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the most incredible general ever to live. Um, and he's Australian, and he he was he, he literally won World War One, and it's kind of been covered up so that movie's called the general and we're working with some of the exe- executive producers of hacksaw ridge and danger close um which were two two great um war films filmed in australia um that, that's probably the biggest project we've got in terms of size bars at budget budget so that's that's far off in the, in the, in the uh, that's far off in the future but in the, in, the, in the immediate now we're working on um the writer director of moon rock monday kurt martin's next feature film hmm. um and it's uh, called the walrus and the oyster that's an interesting um, name <laughs> yeah it is i mean there, there, we, we, there was another name suggested the boy in the room below but it's that kid in that film i, I told you about about it yeah. um, about, and so that's we, we've already found um uh a distributor for that film and we have found a, we've got a, a sales agent who's very interested and the finance seems to be coming together and but it's it's nothing like Moonrock for Monday. It's it's completely yeah, it's completely it's, it's a very very <laughs> it, it, it's it's a very dark psychological thriller. But it's it's a very you know, and so um, we've got the producers from that film called The Witch that came out and launched the career of Anya Taylor Joy, who I think is, from the Queen's Gambit, who I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, they, they, they get they they're Canadian producers that are getting involved and. Then there's another project. Uh, we've got two other projects on our slate, which is one, one's called Switzerland, which yep. is um, based on the play that Jeffrey Rush and Kate Blanchett commissioned for Sydney Theatre Company, written by Joanna Murray Smith. And Film Victoria have been really kind enough to give us a de- development grant of um, of some money to help um, write that script. So that's in development. That's a uh, based on the life of Patricia Highsmith, who wrote the talented Mr. Ripley yep. uh, books. And um, and then the only other, so between the Walrus and the Oyster, Switzerland, and uh, the General, that's that's really most of our projects that we're um, that we're, 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 we're driving forward. forward. So I've, got, I've got another kind of crocodile Dundee meets Jerry Maguire film called Lucky Valentine, which I'm which I'm looking at. But um, it, 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 it's a 
I've, I've got to get my head around that project. Yeah. Now. But we, yeah, I, I, as you're, when you're a producer, you get a lot of scripts that come across your desk, and you've only got so many hours in your day, especially if you've got a family or that. Sort yeah, of, of thing. course. So you yeah. Really, yeah. You really need to be selective and have. It's good to have more than one project because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. And really, your your film, you never, your films never. Uh, greenlit until you're actually on set and the money's in your bank account. And so many times you come so close to being, you know, okay, we've got to be this investor and then, you know, they might pull out or an actor pulls out. So you need, it's important as an independent filmmaker to have several projects, but you got to be, you got to balance, you can't have too many because then you're not, you know, you can't give each project the focus and, and time. Of course. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're, the, they're the films on our slate and, we're, 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 and, and the films I'm looking at. And yeah, so it's pretty exciting. No, it sounds amazing, man. You like got so much happening, and it's just great. No, like, well, I appreciate the time today on on your Hot TV for Australia, and yeah, everybody go check out Moon Rock for Monday. Like, seriously, get out there and watch this movie when it does yeah. become available. Which, yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> Absolutely, um, I, I think I think if only for two reasons to see um, the the beauty of the Australian landscape um, in, a, in a good road trip film, and just to see the incredible performances by. George Puller, who I think is the next Heath Ledger, and and, yeah. and um, Ashlyn Loudon Gamble, who for ten just absolutely Absolute. kicked her first role wow. in the ballpark. So go see it for George. Go check out George and Ash. Go check out the film. And, nice. Um, <laughs> and we, we, I, I really, I really hope you Aussies out there like it. And, and um, I'll try and organise a copy for you, Josh. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to see it. Seriously, just I desperately want to see this movie. <laughs> I'm not going to leave you. I promise.